This is the Demystifying Mental Toughness Podcast, hosted by David Charlton, and you're listening to this podcast to help you build your own mental toughness, or so that you can support other people or your clients better. Either way, you will learn more about developing this plastic personality trait that all but guarantees that you will perform better and lead a more prosperous life. Welcome back to the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with your host, David Charlton. Again, today we take a dip back into the archives, this time with a short bite from episode three, where former Newcastle United, Crystal Palace and Queen's Park Rangers defender, and now the assistant player loans manager at Newcastle United, Peter Ramage tells me about the importance of standing up for yourself when you're out of the team in football. And that might be down to squad rotation, it could well be because you're out of favour with the manager or have been dropped. He passes on some simple suggestions that players young and old can learn from. And from a mental toughness angle, the focus here is interpersonal confidence, which is a measure of mental toughness where performance and well-being of a person can often be determined by the way that they do deal with challenges or criticism. I hope you go on to enjoy the episode. And this is one of my regrets, if I'm brutally honest with you, because um, I wish I'd been kind of a little bit more stubborn um, because there was a period where that first, the second season, I played a lot of games at, at right back um, under Graham Souness, uh, the year that you know, he got sacked and, I, and I'd done well. But the year after, I, I transitioned into centre-half with Stephen Taylor and I thought me and Taylor were doing really well. And then I was, you know, established players were coming back and, I kind of just accepted it. Do you know what I mean? I just thought, right, okay, this is my role. Um, I'm a squad player. You know, I'll just, I'll just get on with it. I'll not, you know, batter down doors and ask why I'm getting, you know, rested here or dropped there or um, squad rotate. I, and I didn't really. And this is one of my biggest regrets about my time at Newcastle. I didn't really work hard enough to to stay in the team, both on and off the field. I wish I'd done more. I wish I'd been more you know, kind of hard-nosed and um, a little bit more aggressive in um, how I was on the training pitch, uh, how I was off the pitch, you know, working on my game in terms of my physicality. I was never I was never built like um, a typical centre-half. I was tall and skinny. You know, I didn't, I just, I just accepted the position that I was at the football club and, you know, I wish I'd been a little bit more like Tails um, in some respect. Tails had that characteristic within him that he was like no nah, I'm going to show you guys that I should be number one and, and he became number one centre back and and I didn't do that and it was um, it was something that you know looking back on my time uh, and and even going into leaving QPR I kind of I didn't really do that until the latter stages of my career when when it was probably too late for me to to get back to the the levels that I was at earlier on was that I didn't I didn't stand up for myself a little bit more than I should have done so what you're talking about there is marginal gains, point one mentality, if you like, where you look at different aspects of you, your overall game, and how you can potentially improve yourself and your performances. Yeah, and I and I think as well from a from a mental standpoint, I just accepted my position. Uh, I accepted where I was as a as a squad player. I didn't really um, sit down and look at myself in the mirror and be like, "No, you, you're not a squad player. You're a first team player." You know, you, you, you've earned the right to be where you are. You've earned the right to be a, a starting, a starting, the starting centre back or a starting right back. You know, go and keep working. Go and show that you deserve to be. I kind of just, yeah, okay, Gaffer, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Okay, I'll be ready when you need us again. I didn't be like, why? What do I need to work on to stay in the team? What do I need to do to, to for you to make me the number one? What do I need to do? Um, you know, it's not a, a, a good tip that I got taught by a coach was I never. Um, you know, when a player comes in and is battering down the doors, asking, you know, why he isn't playing, you know, I come, you know, I turn it on to him. Well, what do you think you need to do to get in the team? Now, what it, and I should have been like that. Again, hindsight, it's a wonderful thing when you're looking down the line. You know, what could I, have, what should I have done? What could I have done to to change that mentality to to be, you know, like I said, a little bit more stubborn, go out on the training field, show the the manager, do extra work in the gym. Uh, maybe do more film work. Um, I just kind of, like I said, accepted my role within the, the squad at, at Newcastle and I didn't, I didn't really mentally um, kind of harden myself up a little bit. 
do you find when you look back some of the different managers that you played under some would be more like open to that approach of being questioned others would wouldn't at all yeah 100 percent. again I, I think it's how you approach the managers and again it was something that i was taught too late in my career really is that you don't just go in battering the doors down and you go in with you know what do i need to do gaffer you know is am i am i like he might take, take you just had a crap game and you don't deserve to play all right fair enough then I'll go out and work on hard on the training pitch or it might have been a tactical thing that he wants you to work on it might have been a technical thing that he wants you to work on but not I didn't really batter doors down throughout my career and like I said it was only kind of towards the latter part is when I kind of started to go in and and not question decisions I kind of just uh, questioned what I needed to do to to get in teams and I think that there was a lot of managers that I played with that would have been open to that you know I'm a I'm a bubbly character I'm a bubbly person even when you know, the chips are down. I always like to walk out with a smile on my face and try and be a good teammate. Um, and I think re- managers throughout my time and respected that. And I think because I had that kind of respect through uh, with all the managers I kind of work with, I think they would have been open to me coming in and just sitting having a chat and a cup of coffee and, and asking what I needed to do. It was great to hear Pete has honesty about dealing with specific situations. He talked a lot about just accepting situations. And as I alluded earlier in the introduction, there are links here with interpersonal confidence, which often we do develop over time with age and experience. Now, for those who have an interest in this area, I'm going to go on now and describe a little bit more about this character trait. Those with low levels of interpersonal confidence can tend to be uncomfortable dealing with people. They might be reluctant to engage with people on occasions. When they're challenged or criticised, they're likely to back down. Some people even accept criticism, even when it's not deserved. In groups, this type of person may have a tendency to allow others to dominate and could be more influential. You know, for example, they might be in situations where they have a large amount of expertise. They know a lot about a topic, yet prefer others to do the talking. I'm sure you've met people like that. Standing up in front of a group or a team, they can feel awkward and embarrassed. And dealing with difficult people, they might seek to avoid. Perhaps they'll put people on a pedestal. And as a result, asking questions of others and participating in discussions with some people, they can struggle with too. Whereas the person with high interpersonal confidence is likely to stand their ground. Whereas the person with high interpersonal confidence will likely stand their ground when they need to, no matter who they're dealing with. They're likely to argue their corner and defend their position, especially when it's important to them. I'm sure you've met people when they have a belief that they're right, they're very tenacious in delivering their point. They go on and on and often on again. To this extreme, some people can dominate others in conversations and might not be the best listeners. So that there is a balance of having high interpersonal confidence and low interpersonal confidence. Criticism and setbacks often doesn't worry the person with high interpersonal confidence. They often just take it in their stride. And contributing in meetings and discussions, they're very happy to. They can be very influential in meetings too, shaping discussions. So arguably, you know, you could say that the person with high interpersonal confidence does have the gift of the gab. Now, the key in my eyes, which people often forget, is to see interpersonal confidence as a skill. Just like passing with your weaker foot in football or building strength in the gym. Interpersonal confidence can be developed if you're willing to look in the mirror and are supported and challenged in a helpful manner. Certainly, when you look at team sports or in the workplace, it's a vital skill if you want to go on to achieve your potential and perform at an optimal level on a consistent basis. Feel free to check out my musings on Instagram and in our Facebook group this week on interpersonal confidence. It's going to give you more ideas about the topic, how you can develop it in yourself and in others. Have a fun week ahead. If you enjoyed this episode of the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with David Charlton, do check out my website, sport-excellence.co.uk and my online sports psychology resources. 
sport-excellence website has essential resources for anyone looking to build their own mental toughness or the mental toughness of their athletes or teams or if you want to achieve peak performance more often or optimal functioning. The Sport Excellence website has everything you need to keep moving forward and thrive. So go on, head over to sport-excellence.co.uk to find out more.